this bird was offering the right foot all the time anyway for when I was doing it. Is that pretty normal? Yes. Okay. Traditionally, we would like the inside foot first. So we went straight up with this and not this. Mm -hmm. You just have a better grip. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna help you if you get to the point. I'm gonna have you switch hands in a minute. Okay. But if you can get to the point where you're able to hold your thumb on both, both feet, feet. <laughs> you're both going to feel more stable. Okay. So go ahead and try it in your left hand. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And usually and what I treat? do, because I shake, as I hold her close to me. Yeah. Other than holding her right here. And we do that, like we'll pick up our birds and I'll treat as I'm holding them and their beak because they're eating out of my hand while I'm holding them. And they're able to walk with us steady. And you know, that's like, because we're running around backstage or <laughs> through the audiences or whatever. She's like, this is easy, let's just do this. So the only thing about setting her down is that it's way easier for a bird to step up onto something than to step back or step down onto so something. So if up. you can just be like, hey, here you go, and she can just easily step right oh, onto it, okay. just make it as easy as possible okay. so that the communication is clearer that way. Perfect. Pretty, pretty She's like, I want the whole treat bag. Yeah. Okay, she wants to go back. So you can see yes. it, but you feel yes, that yes, in yes. your hand first. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, now she feels a little unsteady on there. She's a bird that sleeps on a tree branch that's moving in the wind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Totally fine. Well, yeah, mine's is that wrap, so that's yeah, why I was just true. like, she's... Oh. She's great. I want to I wanna step in and show something, too, that's really great about this bird for, for visually showing what we look for for the clear communication. You and this will, this will apply to you, Linda, this will apply okay. to you as well. The communication, I'm gonna switch the spots for a sec. I like her. The communication's really clear, right? I'm holding the feet. When I, I'm feeling antsiness, so I'm going to signal to her that it's okay to go down and that I want you to go to the perch by lifting my thumb up. When I lift my thumb up, it's a very clear signal that I want you to go back to the perch. And that's where that communication, through repetition, you're you going to communicate, treatment. I have you, you're not going anywhere, or you're gonna communicate, I need you to go somewhere. And for free flight, it's us letting go. For going to the perch, it's us letting go. For us putting them on another person, it's lifting up, letting that foot go. And that, that's part of the foundation of making sure that your communication is really clear with your bird all the time. And this is what I would love to see Marley get to. I wanna see her, him, communicate with the foot when you offer your hand from a distance, mm -hmm. I want to see him reciprocate and say, yes, that's what so I want. Pause for a sec. Okay. I wanna, I, you've got good motivation here, so I want to move forward. Your next question was trying to get flighted behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. And you were saying that you weren't getting, you're not getting flights to you or at all? At all. At all. Like I can't even get her to hop from perch to perch. Okay. Like people have said, you know, move to perch here and try to get her to hop. She leans yes. or do she you, does the foot. Do you know if she's flown ever? I do not. I have never, I have startled her. I mean, she's been startled. She's never flown. I okay. have, I've never had her fly off my shoulder. I've migrated, he'll get startled and he'll fly short flight. I've never had that out of her. Okay. Let me see. So I don't know. What we may be able to do, gosh, you have great, this is great. <laughs> Because, I get that all the time. Because yeah. the communication she's awesome. to go back to the perch is going to be me lifting my thumb, and I can already tell she's antsy, you can start to only reinforce for going back to the perch. Okay. I think this bird might be more likely to fly to an object than fly to you. Okay. And if we can at least start getting those flights somehow, that's going to help. I mean, I could sit here all day and she's just going to lift her foot like, come pick me up, right? Right. right. So if we so take advantage of that. Too. And we get the step up, but then the treat's here. <laughs> right? <laughs> so cute. We'll build that pattern of you get the treat there, because the step up is not an issue for you right now. Mm -mm. But to get the treat, she has to get back to the perch. Okay. So, is that FR1 or is that FR2? It's FR2. It is FR2. Because she's going there and then she's coming back in the second yep. one. She gets so, the treat. We're, we're using. FR2 in this situation, this is one of the exceptions, to train a new behavior by using the behavior that she thinks we're having her do. Okay. So she thinks we're just doing a step up game and by using FR2, we're gonna get more enthusiasm to get the bird to go back to the perch. So we're using FR2 for step up, but it'll increase the motivation for 
for her to want to fly to the perch. Yeah. Okay. But just like before, make sure that you are rewarding her for coming to you nicely and all that as well, because that will be a trick. Just when you're working on this, you can use the FR. She's just an attention grabber. I mean, she just, when I <laughs> took her to that rescue and people held her, she just like loved it. Like yeah. she was in her glory. She just. She doesn't open them? No. She will every now and then. If I pick her up and drop her, she'll open them. But I've never seen her do the. <laughs> I mean, you could force she it would, out of her, but she would, yeah, and that's exactly what I do is I force it out of her. And and I've heard you guys say all day, don't push past the threshold. I have, yeah. I have, for lack of a better word, manhandled her when I had to. She's never tried to bug me. And so ever. that's a great example. Like we were talking before with Sean, you're making deposits in the piggy bank. Every good interaction, you're making the bond stronger and better and more fulfilling so when you have to tell her because there's a house fire and you got to get her out of there and she won't step up yeah. you can make that withdrawal and still come back and have a great relationship she don't with hold her. Grudges. yeah however if most interactions were bad she might that that bank account gets yeah. depleted and you have a hard time the people getting people I got from they had a grandson that was autistic and could do anything with her so it's always on her back carry her around like a chicken <laughs> That's awesome. And so that's why the clear communication is so important because you might accidentally be withdrawing from the bird's bank account without realizing it. I've been thinking about that since yesterday. You still held well, but that's going down and back. Yeah. Can I have so. you do a couple more practice ones with yeah. this bird? Let me get it here. But also the reality is if you have a cockatoo, it's likely to scream. If you have a bird with arthritis in the wing, it may not be likely this bird's going to fly, but without flying, you still have an exceptional bird. And so, at this point, I would say encourage, encourage more training, uh, more, you know, kind of do with, like what Maddie was doing with prop tricks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this bird is super responsive. She's super sweet. The other thing, like if you're really, if you really want to see, like if she will fly, I think the best way to get there is to let her choose to get there. One of the cool things, like Ashlyn and David, they made this awesome foraging tree and it was for like 24 bucks or something yeah. ridiculous where normally you're spending like three to 400 on them. Yeah. I would put smaller version of what they did, three of them together touching. One has food, one has water, one has toys. And she will just learn to walk from one to the other. They're all touching, right? So she can just right. walk. And every few days, gradually space them apart. So it's a big step over, it's a lean, it's a like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And see if she will teach herself and condition to do that hop okay. and to get around. And, and just make it gradual so that it's almost like she doesn't even notice, right? And see if she can build her own muscles on her own time and start to do that. And you might be able to eventually separate them to where once she starts flying on her own, now you can shape it and capture it and condition it. Yeah, like I said, she, um she has a she has a tea stand and then she has a tree stand in the living room and like she'll get her wings going like she really really wants to come yeah. but she won't she'll try to climb down she'll do whatever she can yeah but but With and if she's maybe never she, flown maybe she's maybe she can yeah I and if know. she has never flown that's quite a feat yeah. right whereas if it's a gradual thing it's building her confidence to the point where like this is no problem so there's two different I think scenarios yeah, with larger yeah. parrots, the, the longer you wait from fledging age to get the bird to fly, the less likely you are to get that bird to fly. And that was kind of my assumption is that she probably wasn't fledged. It, it could be, or, you know. See, we, hey, the wings went out. the idea of getting down. She's going to climb down. And we have, like, I'm trying to look at her. Wings. Her muscle mass on her chest, and it looks, looks a little thin, but, I mean, that's natural if they, if she's not really flying much, but. Um, I would suggest maybe just checking with your vet and seeing if there's any supplements you can add that would ease the arthritis pain if there is arthritis. Okay. And, and then implement what Jamie's saying about kind of having various trees that, that she can jump to and fly to. But it's really difficult to get flighted behaviors out of a, out of a macaw that has never flown. That's okay. one of the harder skills. Well, that's kind of, I wanted an opinion on that because I know what I see, but I don't know anybody else that has flown that could say, this is yeah, right. well, with Claudia, we had, when we started working on Sunshine, she was clipped, or mostly clipped, not, it was coming in. And getting that first flight, you remember how hard that was? Yes. The very first willing hop in flight took a month? Took a long time to have her, like just what Jamie told you, mm -hmm. she would have the trees and move the water a little bit further. 
Remember when yep. you were at the table? And also, you told me about the tail thing. Mm -hmm. She needs a flat, was probably better. We only got sunshine jumped on me when we got on the flat surface. Yeah, and sunshine really had to build up muscle mass. I think we're we're gonna we're good for now on yours. Okay. Um, <laughs> good I do I do want to I want to recognize you for doing a great job already. And and realistically, I don't know if we're gonna get flight out of this bird. I just kind of wanted somebody else to say yeah, it is possible or no, it's not possible. I think okay, it's. I think it's possible. It's I, you. It's not yeah. her type, type. I don't know, and but I think my recommendation would be that slow, gradual, that. on her own terms, building confidence slowly, sort of thing. Because when it has like a medical thing in the, I don't. That's not something I would push. Right. Do you know what I mean? And, when the first and you vet said was you've like, already. I don't see any reason why she couldn't fly? But like I said, the second vet that I took her to, and they chipped her, she actually. Saw the her, and, and she yeah. said when she was moving her wings, she could feel a little bit of pop. Okay. And so I've never been told that, and that was just <laughs> three weeks ago.